Okay, so let's uh, let's do another video. <clears throat> um, so David Foster Wallace again loves listing things, um, and so he's going to continue to list um, all of the delicious things you can get at the festival. Now, as some of you are probably, I imagine, it just doesn't seem like serious thought. Um, what David Foster Wallace done so far um, has been. Uh, just talking, he says a big festival of lobster, and there's all kinds of food you can get, and lobsters are old, um, and not. And in past times, they used to be poor people, but now they're for rich people. So we haven't really gotten to any philosophy yet. He's just telling you about lobster, and he's going to keep telling you about lobster. <clears throat> he says, an a la carte entree, um, as, an all, as, an, as an a la carte entree, meaning something you can just kind of order off the menu, lobster can be baked, broiled, steamed, grilled, sautéed, stir-fried, or microwaved. The most common method, though, is boiling. If you're someone who enjoys having lobster at home, this is probably the way you do it, since boiling is so easy. You need a large kettle with a cover, which you fill about halfway full with water. Standard advice is you want 2.5 quarts of water per lobster. Um, David Foster Wallace, again, he's a guy who's interested in <clears throat> expert knowledge. And he loves to learn about something and then talk about it the way professionals do. So, like, this is a detail. You don't need this. He's, but he's talking to you like he thinks it's funny to talk to you like you're like it's a recipe for cooking. He likes to talk however, he, so before he was talking the way a scientist would talk, now he's talking the way a cook would talk. He likes to, he likes to, he likes to learn about anything. So he says here, um, so you need 2.5 quarts of water per lobster. Seawater is optimal, meaning the best thing to use is, is water from the ocean to cook them in. Um, you can add two tablespoons of salt per quart. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, you can add two tablespoons of salt per quart from the tap. Like if you, so if you're, if you're using tap water, you can, you can, you, you can add salt to it to make it like seawater. It also helps to know how much your lobsters weigh. Um, you get the water boiling. Um, you get the, you get the water boiling, put heat and let the kettle simmer 10 minutes for the first pound of lobster, then three minutes, um, each pound after that. That's assuming you've got hard shell lobsters, which again, um, if you don't, if you, which again, if you don't, um, subtract three minutes from the total. The reason the kettle's lobster turns scarlet, and they turn bright red, is that boiling the lobsters, it is, is that boiling lo the lobsters are done, sorry, sorry, I'm trying this again. Um, oh boy, I messed this up, okay. This is assuming you've got hard shell lobsters, which again, if you don't live between Boston and Halifax, it's probably what you've got. For shredders, that's a different kind of lobster, you're supposed to somehow, um, you're, you're supposed to subtract three minutes from the total. The reason the kettle's lobsters turn scarlet, I mean they turn bright red, is, the, is, is, is it somehow suppresses every pigment in their chitin, that's the, the shells, but one. If you want an easy test of whether the lobsters are done, you try pulling on one of their antenna. If it comes out of the head with minimal effort, you're ready to eat. So now he's talking like a scientist. So first he's talking like a journalist. Let me tell you all about this festival. Then he's talking like a scientist. Let me tell you um, about where the lobsters, uh, about what lobsters are. Then he's talking like a historian. Well, lobsters used to be like this, but now they're like that. Now he's talking like a cook. Here's how you here's how you cook lobster. You boil the big pot and you put them in. You, you, you get a big pot of seawater and you set it to boiling and you put the lobsters in and it cooks them and their shells turn red. And then, you know, how can you know that it's done? Okay. So I think at this point, those are the, the three modes he's done, right? He did scientist, he did journalist, scientist, historian, cook. Now we get to the actual subject matter. So here we go. Now the philosophy is going to start here. <clears throat> A detail so obvious that most recipes don't even bother to mention it is that each lobster is supposed to be alive when you put it in the kettle. Meaning the, 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 the kettle, the, the thing of water that you cook in, the, the big pot. This is part of the lobster's modern appeal. It's the freshest food there is. Right? So people... So, and I've cooked lobster before, by the way. Um, I, I did it with some friends of mine. Um, so, what you, the lobster's alive. It's moving around. Um, it's, it's this little bug thing with little pincers, and it's trying to go like this. Um, and you're supposed to boil water, and then you take the lobster. It's wiggling around, and you drop it in the water, and you boil it for a couple of minutes. And then when it's all done, you just crack the shell, and you eat it. So, um, so then there is this question that's all but unavoidable at the world's largest lobster cooker and may arise in kitchens across the US. Is it all right to boil a sentient creature alive just for our gustatory pleasure? A related set of concerns. Is the previous question irksomely PC or sentimental? What does all right even mean in this context? Is the whole thing just a matter of personal choice? There, this is the paragraph, sorry. 
this paragraph here, the second part of this, from here to here, this is important. You might want to underline that. Now, it's a little tricky and a little complicated, but we're going to go over it. Um, but now we begin the philosophy part. Um, so there's some vocabulary you're going to need for starters, so let's do some vocabulary. Um, so he says there's a question that's unavoidable. Right, we're going to have to ask this question. You're going to have to ask it both at the festival and also if you cook lobsters in your home, kitchens all across the U.S. Is it all right to boil a sentient creature alive? So sentient means thinking. Um, we think when for sentient creatures generally, and this is a little tricky, but basically sentient creatures are, are creatures that have that think. Um, so something can be alive and not think. So for example, I think trees are alive, but they're not sentient. They're not thinking. Um, but the lobster, like like a tree doesn't learn, I don't think. I don't know. This is a philosophical question. I don't really know the answer. But I don't think trees and plants learn things. But lobsters can learn stuff. Uh, they have brains, and they can kind of, you know, think about problems to solve. Um, so lobsters are, they're sentient in the sense that their brains are alive. Um, they can learn things. They know stuff. Um, so, so, he's, so sentient means sort of uh, living. Um, I mean, it's, so sentient means like thinking creature. Gustatory pleasure, that means that gustatory has to do with eating. So gustatory pleasure is the pleasure of eating food. He says a related set of terms. Um, is the irksomely PC. Irksomely PC is a very tough thing to explain, but I'm going to do it. So irksome means annoying. Um, PC means politically correct. Um, <clears throat> Oh boy, this is impossible to explain. I hate this. Um, so PC means politically correct. It's a it's a term that's meant. Um, it's used to define being sensitive to other people. PC language is language that is sensitive to other people's needs, to other living creatures' needs. Um, so, for example, um, so things that are not PC meaning not politically correct, um, are things like like racist terms. So if, you, if you're calling somebody the N-word or you're using or, or you're calling, a, uh, if, if you're using mean language uh, or racist language, it's not PC um, because it's not being respectful of how other people feel. You're just being a jerk. Um, so P, PC language means language that's sensitive towards being nice to other people. Um, it's about kindness and treating people with respect and dignity. Um, this gets complicated because a lot of people think PC language is like, it's infringing on my free speech and I should be able to say whatever I want, um, which is true. You are allowed to say whatever you want, but then those people get mad if, say, you stop liking them or they lose their job because they keep saying the N-word over and over and over again. Um, to, um, so it's uh, so irksomely PC means like annoyingly oversensitive. That's how I'm going to translate that. Irksomely PC means annoyingly oversensitive. Um, sentimental uh, also means kind of um, overly sensitive. And that's a very kind of similar idea. Sentimental is too much tied. Sentiment, if you think of sentimental, it primarily has to do with your emotions. So now that we have some of those vocabulary terms ready, I think we can find, we can look at this, the philosophical question he's raising. So David Foster Wallace says, so here, so then here is a question that's all but unavoidable. Um, so the, he says, so he says they don't even mention it, but you got you, when you're cooking lobster, you're taking a living animal and you're dropping, because here's the thing, when you cook burger at home, right, it's already dead. Right? If you get a steak or a burger or chicken, you bring it home and you put you, you, you ground meat. And you just you know you put it onto the stove and you cook it, and it makes hamburgers. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be cooking something in a minute. Um, but that it's it's um, David Foster with 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 lobsters though. If you want to cook lobster, you gotta get the lobster, and when you bring it home, the lobster's still alive. That's not true of steak and chicken and pork, um, and shrimp or whatever. They're not alive. Um, but the lobster's alive when you bring it home, and you drop it to a pot of boiling water. And so David Foster Wallace wants to ask these questions. He says, he says we gotta, we, he says we we gotta ask us, ourselves a question. Is it all right to boil a thinking creature alive? just because it's enjoyable to eat, gustatory pleasure? A related set of concerns. Is the previous question overly sent, is it being overly, annoyingly oversensitive or emotional? Um, what does all right even mean in this context? Um, is the whole thing just a matter of personal choice? Is it really just about personal choice? Or is it about ethics? Is it about 
what Socrates was higher heavenly things Socrates would talk about. Is it just your personal opinion whether you feel like killing a creature in your kitchen because it's enjoyable to eat, or is there a larger philosophical question about ethics? That is the issue. This is what David Foster Wallace is about.